Just a quick video how to convert from moles to atoms and then convert atoms to moles. We're going to use a mnemonic, kind of a memory device, and there's only one thing you need to remember. And that's when you go from moles to atoms, you multiply by Avogadro's number. It's silly, but you remember. And all you need to do is remember moles to atoms, multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. If we go the other direction, atoms to moles, we do the reverse. We divide by Avogadro's number. So just remember this, and you should be good. Let's do some problems. So let's say you have 1.21 moles of helium. You want atoms. Moles to atoms, we're going to multiply by Avogadro's number, like this. And remember, Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. But that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in one mole. So these are the units we're going to use here. That's real important. So now we're going to multiply, or multiply, if you like, moles on top and the bottom. They cancel out. You're left with atoms. You know you did it right. So I take 1.2 times 6.02. I get 7.28. And then I can just put the times 10 to the 23rd on the end. And that's atoms. The only thing that's left. That's it. That's how you do it. So pause and give this one a try. And remember, Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in one mole. Let's convert 0.78 moles of iron. And it really doesn't matter what we're converting. We're going to get the same answer. But let's say iron atoms here. So how do you get these moles to atoms? Pause and give it a try. So we've got moles, we're going to atoms, we're going to multiply by Avogadro's number, like this. And remember, that's atoms per mole. We multiply moles on top and the bottom, they cancel out, we're left with atoms. And we end up with 4.7, and we can just add the times 10 to the 23rd there on the end, and we have atoms. And one thing that's kind of nice about this, when your teacher tells you you should be using conversion factors, you could just draw a line here like this and put it over one mole, and you're using conversion factors, factor label method, dimensional analysis. Everything cancels out. You're left with atoms. Same thing. Let's take a look at what happens when we go from atoms to moles. So let's convert 8.21 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And these could be atoms of anything. Let's say silver. When we go from atoms to moles, now we're going from atoms to moles. So we're doing the reverse. We divide by Avogadro's number, like this. And again, remember, that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole. That's our conversion factor there. We have atoms on top here and atoms on the bottom. That leaves us moles. Really, it's 1 over 1 over moles. That's just moles. So now divide 8.21 by 6.02, 1.36. Since this is the same, we're basically subtracting these exponents. They go away. We end up with 1.36 moles of, we said, silver there. Okay, so now you give it a try. So pause and convert 2.77 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold here to moles. So atoms on top, right here on top, left with moles, 2.77 divided by 6.02, that equals 0 0.46, and that's moles, that's what's left. And remember, these are the same, we subtract them, and they just basically cancel out. So that's how you convert from moles to atoms and atoms to moles. I do want to look just briefly at what happens when we have different exponents here, though. So let's say we had 10 to the 13th instead of 10 to the 23rd. So we'd still divide these two numbers to get 0 0.46. Now we'd subtract. So 13 minus 23, that equals negative 10. So we'd have times 10 to the negative 10. So you just subtract the exponents and then you end up with this here. You could change that to scientific notation if you wanted as well. If you want some more help with moles to grams, 
check out my stoichiometry playlist. That'll really help you get all of these things together, conversions from moles to grams to molecules to liters, everything you need. This is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.